Yes, I believe it's possible to end the AIDS pandemic as a public health threat by 2030. And we have a roadmap in place to help us achieve this goal. We must make sure that 95% of those who have HIV know their status by improving the HIV testing services and ensure that 95% of those who test positive are on treatment. And out of that, 95% should be virally suppressed, which essentially means that they have reduced number of viral copies in their bodies and the risk of transmitting HIV to another person is reduced. So this is known as the 95, 95, 95 target to end the AIDS pandemic. Yes, the African region has made tremendous progress in the fight against HIV. Right now we have a reduction in new infections by 43% from 2010 and the deaths have reduced by 48%. Also, we have countries like Eswatini that have already achieved the 95, 95, 95 target and other countries like Botswana, Kenya, Malawi, Zambia and Zimbabwe are on track to achieving these targets. So yes, it is possible to do that. So we have made this progress because we have increased access to ARVs in the region. The emphasis has been placed on ensuring that mothers who have HIV do not transmit it to their babies. And also adolescents and young people have easier access to friendly services that ensures that they get the care and treatment they need once they test HIV positive. So HIV is a complex disease and the pandemic is constantly evolving. WHO analysis at the moment shows that we have 87% of those who live with HIV know their status and out of that 77% are on treatment and only 68% are virally suppressed. So we have to do a lot more to achieve the 95, 95, 95 targets. Yes, there are some gaps that are hindering us from achieving the targets set before us. And one of that is the inaccessibility to treatment for some vulnerable and key populations. Also, the viral load testing services are quite limited in some settings, and this is posing a challenge in us achieving our targets. To end AIDS, we have to ensure that there is access to quality HIV services at the grassroots levels in the communities and within the health facilities. Also, policies should be put in place to fight stigma and discrimination so that those seeking care and they are vulnerable are not hindered from coming to the facilities.